Today I'm going to be walking you through how I work with 4K HLG files coming out of the Fuji X-T3 in DaVinci Resolve. Now I've been using Resolve as an enthusiast for a couple of years now and I personally had a bit of struggle when I first started dealing with these files in Resolve and it generally boiled down to two main reasons. The first issue was that the 4K files on my machine were just struggling super hard, unreasonably hard. I really don't understand why it was struggling that hard and I knew there was some way around it but I just wasn't sure at the time. I actually started shooting 1080 for a while but now I'm back to 4K. The second is that the colors always felt a little bit off. So the colors were there, the white balance was there, but there just wasn't that oomph that I was seeing in other people's footage. So I knew, once again, I knew there was something that I needed to be doing in Resolve to get the most out of them. So after an unreasonable amount of research, I'm here to show you the best way to work with these files in DaVinci Resolve. Alrighty, so I've just started a new project here in DaVinci Resolve. And before you do anything, you need to go into the project settings and update all the information here. So the timeline res, I wanna work with 4K, which is this one. And for my project, I'm gonna be working in 25 frames a second. So just update all of these and hit that save button. So I'm gonna drag my media in. So just gonna pop these in here. So the clips have a different frame rate than the current project settings. The frame rate on my clips is actually 50 frames a second. So no, I don't want to change anything. I've definitely set my timeline correctly. Cool. So let's just drag these all onto the timeline. And look what happens when I hit play with these files. They just chug away. I'm going to take a look at my CPU here. And we can just see it's absolutely slammed at 100%. And that's because these files are H.265 format, which is a compressed delivery format. So if you can kind of imagine a zip file, it's where you take all this information, you compress it into a single file. That's the equivalent of what's happening here with these H.265s. So for DaVinci Resolve to push and pull the color and even play it on the timeline here, it's constantly using the CPU to uncompress that file and, and play around with it. Um, so in its current form, the H.265s really struggle. You'd probably need a really high-end machine to uh, play these natively. So what we can do is we can take the H.265 file, we can uncompress it, just like you would unzip a file. So we can transcode these. And DaVinci Resolve has a setting, if you right-click here, called Generate Optimized Media. So if we go into our project settings, you've got Optimized Media settings here. It defaults to choose automatically but I found the sweet spot here is at the quarter. Uh, DNX, HR, HQX, you can just leave these alone. There's a bunch of different options. I just stick with this one. So you can either come up here to the files and uh, generate optimized media if you wanna do everything that's not on the timeline. But typically I just drag them to the timeline and hit generate optimized media. This is definitely gonna take some time um, so if I've done a big shoot, half an hour, an hour, I'll just click on these to optimize the media and I'll just leave it for like half an hour, an hour, let it do its thing. Some people do it overnight. Even just with this short amount of clips, we can see it's going to take a solid four to five minutes. So I'll just fast forward through this and come back when it's done. All right, now that this is done, let's go and play the footage and we can see it's much smoother. So this is the first hurdle I had with the 4K footage. You can do this to any footage. So if you're struggling with any footage in DaVinci Resolve, you can use optimized media to get that smooth playback. So the second problem I had was with color. I'm just gonna stop here on this frame. I'm using these white balance cards. These were like five, $10 off Amazon. If you're in a real pinch, you could probably even use a piece of photocopy paper there. So we'll just go into the color tab. Uh, this is where we do all of our color correcting. Apologies if I'm going too fast or too slow. I'm not really sure how good you are at DaVinci Resolve. I'll try and explain a few things, but I don't want to go too in depth. Uh, so this is a node. I'm going to do the white balance on this. So I go here. I'm just going to draw a little box. Actually, you know what? I'll just do a box over the white. Just to simulate if you just had a piece of paper. You hit Shift H and it focuses there. Now over here, we can click on our uh, graphs. We'll go to the parade. And to get a white balance, all of these should typically match up. So we can see the blue's a little bit higher. I'll drop that blue down, bring the red up a tad. And you know, they're about flush. 
So I'll apply this to the lot. So if I control D, we can see before and after. I, you know, it's so hard to tell when you when you change things, but this looks so much more purplier than the finished product. So I'll hit Alt S to bring up a new node. Um, it's better to do one thing per node or, or very small amounts per nodes. I'd rather have 10 nodes doing individual things. Um, you can also label the nodes. So for this one, I'll say WB for white balance. I'll label this for exposure. Um, and to do this, I'll pop out this tab and I'll bring the exposure down. So if you're unsure, zero is blacks and 1023 is the whites. So we can just use this bar here. This lift bar crushes the uh, essentially the shadows. So I'll bring that to the bottom. A little bit over is fine. And I'll bring the highs to the top or the gain to the top. And then if you want to play around with the mids, you can use the gamma wheel. You can, you know, have that kind of look or you can have that kind of look. It generally depends on the footage. Um, and all of these are pretty relational. So when you move one, you can see it slightly shifts the top. So I think about here looks good for me. I like a little bit brighter footage. And there we go. So that's looking pretty good. This is a very, very simple grade. This is how I would have graded the old footage on my uh, Canon. That was an F-Log or HLG footage. And for the most part, this will do the trick. Now this color space was fine for the Canon stuff because that stuff was recorded with the BT709 color space. But this HLG uh, format has a much larger color space. So I've just gone onto the uh, Fuji website. They've got some LUTs for this footage. And if we go into this data sheet, it really explains it uh, pretty well. Sorry, I don't use Explorer too much. So if we look at this diagram here, the F-Log color space is, is this big red one, and the uh, BT709 color space is this smaller one here. So we've recorded color information a lot further out than what we're trying to display it. So if we go back to Resolve, you know, we can definitely see color here, it definitely exists, but uh, to truly get this uh, F-Log color to fit into the 709 space, it's better to use an algorithm or some sort of translation. And that's what these LUTs from Fuji do. Um, you know, wow, somebody, <laughs> somebody's really, uh, you know, I'll take it for granted that somebody's figured this out. There's a gamma curve or an F-Log curve that somebody's, uh, figured out here and they provide that in a lot so if I go back here I'm gonna duplicate this footage out and we'll um, we'll edit it so it was this first clip here so I'll just give myself some room so I'm gonna hold alt click on this file and we uh, duplicate it out oops just get the audio why not so I'll go to color uh, let's reset the entire grade here. So these are the LUTs. I've already installed them here. There's some information on the Fuji site to install them. But there's uh, three. There's the uh, F-Log to Eterna, F-Log to BT709, and then there's another F-Log to BT709, which is WDR. This middle one here is the one that we're going to want to use. So I'll apply that LUT. So before we do any corrections, I want to have that LUT in place. You know, I can name this if I really wanted to. And then we'll go through the same steps. So I'll do the white balance. Just about there. And you know, this is similar to last time. The blue was a little hot. So I'll bring the blue down in the gain. Bring up the red a little bit so they match. Apply this to the entire window. All right, and then just pop this out. We'll adjust our highlights or gain. So I'll roll that up. And same with the uh, lift, which is the shadows. Now we can play with our uh, gamma, which is sort of our midpoint. I like it a little bit, a little bit brighter. So about there looks good to me. Got a bit more room up here in the gain and 
voila, very similar. All right, so let's let's compare the uh, the images. So I mean, look at the difference there. There's so much more color information that we just didn't have before. And that's because you need to use those LUTs to really pull out the maximum color of the HLG footage. Now, I'm going to leave it here today just with this. Uh, there's obviously some more advanced color correction you can do from here. This is sort of just a primary grade to get you in a good standing point. And honestly, for a lot of the YouTube stuff I have, I just want to get a white balance done, pull a half decent color, and that's good enough. You know, if I was grading an entire movie, we'd move on from here to get some sort of stylistic look. But the two biggest problems we had is the first one was that we couldn't play the footage because it was stuttering. The second was that the colors were just looking off like so. And we know that by applying a lot, we can get much more richer tones out of this color. So hopefully this has been helpful. I really wish when I started out, uh, somebody had made one of these videos because it really would have saved me a ton of time. It may do some more DaVinci Resolve tutorials in the future. So if there's anything you want to see, just drop them in the comments. So thanks for sticking around. I hope you got something out of this and hopefully you can squeeze that little bit extra out of your footage now. Smash that like and subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of my latest videos. I'm Nathan, this is Phoenix Tech. Thank you once again, and we'll catch you on the next one.